Meanwhile, Claire, in her room, takes out a suitcase full of knickknacks and novelties, trying to entertain herself with them. Somewhere else in the house, the mother uses the local sauna for a little relaxation, but then the door locks. Some gas begins to pour in, and then she, of course, tries to bust out using the ape way, but it's not working. With that way failing, she resorts to begging her husband for mercy, but again, that doesn't work. Moist from the sauna's heat forms on the glass door. Then a riddle on the glass slowly shows itself. Looks like the gas that's set. She figures out that the riddle leads her to heated rocks. So she begins digging and finds an oddly colored rock. She breaks it open and it's a big magnet. She figures out that she can use it to open the door locks. But she better act quick because that heat is rising fast. She gets all the locks, but sadly the heat gets to her. Tough luck. Speaking of tough luck, let's go to this plane and... Oh, oh, too late. False alarm. Just a simulation. Welcome to the present day. They test this rig, and it only has a 4% chance of survival. Henry here still working on the escape room. Then we're taken to the airport, where Zoe Davis and Ben Miller are currently awaiting their flight to stop a bad guy. Ben kind of chickens out, but Zoe stays true to her cause and reminds Ben that he doesn't have to come. We can walk away if, if we wanted to. Oh well, they're already here, so Ben comes nonetheless. Back to Henry. He takes a little break from work and checks up on Claire. She seems to be goofing off at first, but goes into serious mode when she finally notices Henry come in. She seems to be locked up and Claire is furious about being in such a box. Plus the fact that Henry is just obsessed with ending Zoe's life. Claire tries to plead for Zoe's sake, even bringing up the loss of her mother. But Henry just turns a deaf ear. Back at the airport with Zoe and Ben, they begin to board. But Zoe seems to be having PTSD. Have a nice flight. And starts to see things here and there. Ben tries to reassure her. But Zoe begins to see haunting memories of her mother's passing. She can't handle that much mental pressure, so she gives in and runs out of the boarding gate of the plane. So the two end up getting this dumpy K car to try and compensate for their lost plane travel. Zoe's wondering why Ben still wants to come with her, but I'm guessing he's just a really big simp for her. That and he lost his prior job to this, so he feels somewhat sympathetic to Zoe? Nah, man, he's just a simp. Zoe's driving and they get on the road. And the road's long, so they eventually stop by a motel to get some rest. The two have an awkward moment before Zoe wins all the bathroom rights. Then Ben hangs around his bed. That's until peace breaks and Zoe seems to be locked in the bathroom. Not to mention their entire motel room goes crazy and begins to squeeze Ben like toothpaste. False alarm yet again. It was just Ben's nightmare. Zoe calms him down. And they make their way to New York. Zoe says Minos, the company responsible for the whole Squid Game event, is just in this old abandoned government building. The place looks empty, but Zoe's confident that this is the place. Zoe goes and tries to find a way in, but this hooded hobo says this place is condemned. There has to be something in here. He might be able to help and... No, nope, it's just another dirty crook. The two run after him in the streets until they reach the subway. Well, the thief then makes off with Zoe's mother's priceless clock. They're going to try to get off at the next station, and Zoe begins to notice that there's only a few of them in the train car. She goes to the conductor's quarters of the train, but he's not there. Soon the train cars just separate and everyone begins to panic. Their car goes in a separate track and they have a head-on collision with the barrier. Everyone recoils hard, but they mostly look a-okay. <laughs> the doors seem to be sealed shut. Looks like nobody's gonna help the six of them. And Ben says that Minos has found them after the announcement goes off. It seems that these are all survivors from the previous games. All right, the rules are simple. Solve the puzzles and they win. Well, at least a few of them will. Suddenly, something latches onto the train and they shock the surface. Looks like the entire train is being electrified, even from the inside. They just got to keep their cool. And one of them replays the train car's announcer message. The automated voice hints of a suspicious package. So one of them finds a bag that doesn't seem to belong to anyone. Inside, there's a towel and a doorknob of some sort. Well, whatever it is, they're searching. And they're careful about the poles being ripe with shock. One of them finds a trapdoor from under the floor mat. Then this Mexican Jeff Bezos says that a real clue might lie in the conductor's booth. 
so he tries to insert the door handle on the door going to the conductor's booth. That's a no-no. So he tries again, but this time with a leather belt, cause it's an insulator. Hoorah! It works. One problem. The wheel of the train car shocks him. Then they find a token slot, so now they gotta find one. Well, they find another clue that says, all false advertising has to be pulled. So Ben looks back to this particular sign that's misspelled. They begin to check around and they do find a few wrongly spelled adverts. But it looks like it's also trying to spell something else out. They think it might be corresponding to the number of handles. So they deduce that they gotta pull down certain handles. One of them finds rubber lining from inside the bag earlier, so they have to use that. This lady needs something sharp like a key to cut it, so Bueno Nacho Jeff throws her some keys, but it gets zapped thanks to Tesla coils from above. Next time, hand them over. They get rubbered up and find the right handle. So Zoe pulls, and out comes a token. They gotta hurry, because those Tesla coils are really beginning to rile up. They get more tokens, but the shocks get worse. It's a game of hangman. They need three more to advance, and Agent 47 finds the next ad. Too bad he gets the Soviet treatment lighting up like a Christmas tree. The girl tackles him with rubber, but sadly, too late. She tries to figure out the missing letters, and it's W, B, and O. Ben goes for the grab and finds two tokens. Zoe helps out and finds the last one. The trap door opens and they all crawl out, except for Baldy who took the dirt nap. They all land in this cage-like apparatus and it begins moving down. They try to have a moment of silence for the poor hairless twit who got zapped and then they introduce themselves. The quick thinking lady is Brianna, the scruffy dude is Nate, and the blonde is Rachel. Zoe and Ben then introduce themselves and Zoe deduces that the puzzles may be based on their traumas. So the rest are thinking it was designed for the nameless bald guy. It's time for the next stage. Welcome to this hall of exquisite taste. Place looks like a bank that would have gotten robbed in the 90s and even the bank's vault door is open. Suddenly the security team announces that it's online. Lasers fire off like Resident Evil 4 and Rachel says the tiles might be activating the lasers. They slowly help Brianna off the tile and she's fine. Well, mostly. The initial laser firing melted her shirt to her skin. The system announces that a full laser grid will go off in 10 minutes as that vault door closes. Nate suddenly finds one of the keys inside a lollipop, and Zoe's thinking it might be for the safety deposit boxes across the counter, so she cautiously scales behind the counter. Look for some more keys. Time to split up and look for more clues. Brianna finds another key inside a lollipop, so she tries it on the deposit boxes at the opposite side. They've got eight minutes before this place turns into a particle cannon. Then Nate finds an ATM. He needs a pin code consisting of four numbers. Brianna finds a briefcase. Then Ben finds a box that has the name Sonia instead of a number code. Zoe opens it and out comes razor sharp diamonds. Rachel and Brianna find the same Sonia box and there's two packs of blank bills in there. Zoe's figuring out that they need the adult red stuff on the bills, so Rachel has to bring the bills. Too bad the counters are now rigged with laser triggers and Rachel almost becomes Swiss cheese. Zoe gets the bills and they get the pin code. Nate enters it. Then the bank's clocks shift. A new clue gives away that the clocks are dialed to chess coordinates on the tiles. So Zoe says they have to start three tiles from the left. Nate gets daring and plots the course with lollipops as he makes his way through the tiles. He gets far enough to step on a loaded tile and sadly, no lasers or decapitation. Something just opened up! Instead, however, there is this small vault that opened up. The locks need three more numbers now and Nate gets a hint from the tile below. The security team announces there's only three minutes left. Nate navigates through the tiles with the biggest balls once again, but this time a body has been discovered. Not exactly, because Rachel says he's only out cold. Then they figure out that they're not out for a number. Brianna just needs to turn the dial all the way. Success. They found a graph. Now what? Well, they have one minute left, so Brianna tosses it to Zoe, and she maps it on the floor plan. They haul their tuchuses while hauling the fainted Nate and Zoe's navigating. 10 seconds are left and Zoe books it and she makes it to the vault door just in time. Inside, the crew takes a breather and Ben goes on a field day with Nate trying to wake him up and guilt trip him. We almost lost Zoe out there. That's what happened. Zoe stops Ben before things get out of hand, saying that Nate was just trying to help. Breaks over because the cave they're in begins to collapse. So they rush out of there. Next stage. 
they find themselves outside. Or it's a next level holodeck simulating an abandoned beach. And Brianna finds a Polaroid camera. She takes a picture and dear god, the entire place flashes. Well, not just that, but it also changes the tone of the entire beach. Okay, time to look for more clues. But what they didn't realize is that the sand suddenly ate the Polaroid and the camera. They scatter. Then Nate finds a radio shouting for an SOS. While Rachel finds a cooler full of the stinkiest crabs. They need to look for an anchor, because Rachel found a door slot that it might fit into. Ben finds some boat scrap, and they begin their search along the junk. Rachel finds a wheel, and Ben finds a metal detector. He connects it to the wheel Rachel found, and it's apparently the dish for it. Why is it still in my face? Nate begins scanning around while the gang follows him. Zoe finds writing in the sand saying SOS, and Nate picks something up with the metal detector. They need help, so Ben calls Zoe over, and with newly found shovels, they start digging. The gang scrapes off the sand until they find a small anchor. Easy, right? Well, too easy. Also, the anchor seems to be tied down to something, while the sand inconspicuously eats up more stuff. The gang's pulling the rope tied to the anchor as they try to rip and free it. They're all suddenly sinking in some sort of quicksand, and Rachel sinks the deepest. They need a freer, so Brianna grabs life support, but it's too late. Rachel is no more. That's not what Nate the Super Priest thinks. He forces the rest of them to grab a rope tied around him. What are you doing? She's gone. Then willingly takes the dive into the sand where Rachel sank. Brianna, Zoe, and Ben are holding tight. And it's a miracle. Rachel surfaces. They slowly pull her up, and Nate shows his head as well. The gang use all their might, but this is their downfall because that rope snaps. Goodbye, Super Priest. They get in the shack thanks to the anchor and look around. Zoe finds a way out via the fridge. Then they find a switch from a pole that looks like the lighthouse from outside. Zoe switches it on, and the shack rumbles a little bit and the beach goes dark. The lighthouse on the outside deploys a searchlight and some ladder steps. Zoe goes for it, while the gang's trying to survive the collapsing shack. She climbs the lighthouse and finds a clue via the telescope. Ben tells the rest about what he found to Brianna and Rachel, and then he traverses the sand once again to find more clues on the junkyard. Zoe's trying to remove this panel, while Brianna and Rachel try to stay alive in the shack. Ben finds a plug and gives it to Brianna and Rachel, but Zoe found another way out from that panel removal from earlier. The entire place is collapsing, and Ben and Brianna are arguing which way is the real way out. Things are falling apart, so Rachel goes with them. Ben is still trying to convince Brianna, but sadly, she's an influencer, so, you know, brainlit by default. Brianna immediately recognizes her mistake and gets out, but too late. Ben climbs the lighthouse, but he's too late. The lighthouse cuts the ladder path, and he's sand food. Zoe eats a little PTSD of her memories with Ben, but Rachel snaps her out of it, and she enters the hole. Rachel and Zoe are all that's left, and Zoe is blaming herself massively. It's my fault. She tries to snap out of it once again because they gotta survive. And then, Rachel goes on a tangent to say that she was born with a condition that doesn't allow her to feel physical pain. This is supposed to be a pep talk? Well, they slowly walk around. The closer they get to the walls, the louder things become. It sounds like sirens and people. So Rachel rushes and climbs up the ladder with Zoe on the tail. They're finally free. And that's it for escape. N no, wait. That's Brianna, and she's trying to keep the manhole from closing. Well, not over. Looks like the illusion's revealed. New object, find the keys to the bodega, or it rains acid, and they'll be looking like Jeffrey Dahmer victims. This is a quick one, because there's only a minute left. They find a ladder to the roof. Brianna finds a key, and 10 seconds left. They unlock the bodega, but too late. So now it's finally over for them, right? No. They're saved by this little roof that falls out once that acid starts raining. A new timer begins for a minute. Then a new show plays. New goal. They wanted to collect the rain. They have to find something to collect acid rain with so they can bust through. They get a ketchup bottle and the rain started again. They finally get that acid and melt through the phone booth locks. Then they find this acid proof umbrella and Zoe is saved right before the rain comes. She figures out they have to pick up the phone at specific rings. Then the cab door opens. Zoe gets in, but the two are left locked outside from the cab. Well, game over for the two girls, cuz time's up. Bing bong, two bodies have been discovered. 
somewhere in the control room. Henry and his team seem to have a minor setback, but they still go through with their plans. We play through. Zoe finds herself in the presence of Claire. She figures out that all those puzzles are about Claire and the passing of her mother, Sonia. Claire tells Zoe that she designed the puzzles, but tries to win her trust because Ben's alive. That's until he's thrown back into that sauna trap that Sonia was in before. Two last puzzles are put into play, one for Ben in the sauna, while another is Zoe and Claire solving a puzzle put up by Henry. Zoe figures out a way, so the girls do their math while Ben bears the heat. They're eventually free, and Ensler meets them on their way out. Sadly, Henry's there too. Ensler shoots Henry all of a sudden, so they manage to trap him in the glass room Claire was in. The two girls rush to Henry's study. Claire makes it just in time to save Ben. Claire plans to have the father behind bars while Zoe zooms off to meet Ben. She drives back to the abandoned building and meets Ben with the paramedics, damaged but still alive. Claire confronts Henry, and she's also apparently behind the passing of Sonia, because she planned it all along. She then swiftly purges Henry. Goodbye, Dad. Put on those thinking caps, because that was it for Escape Room Tournament of Champions. I don't know, what'd you guys think about this mind-melting movie? Tell us, please, in the comments down below using that hashtag cinema recap. This was Escape Room Tournament of Champions by Columbia Pictures, starring Taylor Russell, Logan Miller, and Isabel Furman. Until that next puzzle to solve, farewell.